you are in the house of God. We are so blessed to see each other in person after a long time and after much prayer. I know we as a church family have been praying and holding each other in our hearts and also before God's throne. So we are so glad, as our praise team has uh, reminded us, that God knows our name. Our name is so precious to our living God. So we are thankful that God knows our name and God has brought us together to worship. So welcome to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On behalf of Pastor Laura and myself, our praise team, thank you to Mary and Diane and Mark and Cheryl. We are also grateful for our tech team of uh, Andy and Pete and Linda and Colin. We are so grateful for your support. And just take a moment to say hello to each other. If you haven't seen, wave at each other. Or just uh, give, a, give a little high five, air fives or so. Yeah, well, with all the guidelines that are going on uh, as a church, we are, are going to be uh, reviewing some of those this week, and we will be coming up with a plan. So just uh, continue to keep that theme of do no harm by keeping yourself safe and those around us safe as well. This uh, week's broadcast, the radio broadcast, is sponsored by Rhonda Murphy and Steve Newart. We are also grateful for the altar flowers that are given by Carol Jacobs and the family in memory of uh, Gilbert Jacobs. So we are grateful to God for all with which we have been blessed even till this very moment. I have a few announcements and Pastor Laura will also give us a, sh uh, a few of them. Uh, we are uh, invited by the trustees to join in a helping hands uh, time of just looking at odd things around the church that need to be spruced up. And that is going to be this coming Saturday, uh, May 22nd from eight to noon. Uh, we are invited, if you have some gifts and skills, uh, you could call the church office and there will be information that you can avail of. Also, on a note of uh, prayer and also for support, we will be celebrating the life of Ellie Anderson. Ellie's uh, memorial service will be this coming uh, Friday at uh, UC Davis Callahan, the, the coming uh, Friday of the 21st of May. Uh, there will be visitation from 4 to 7 and at 7 o'clock there will be a life celebration and the burial is going to be in Waltham, Illinois uh, which is on Saturday at uh, I think we leave here at 9.30 so Waltham is just north of La Salle, Peru on 39 so please uh, keep the family in your prayers. So those are some of the announcements that I have. I think uh, we have a few more about the preschool and uh, things that uh, the mission continues yes preschool registration is continues to be open if you know a preschool family let them know we have an excellent program um, also we have uh, our sunday school gathering in uh, next week um, and even if you don't go to sunday school even if you're a saturday night person you're still welcome to come it's next sunday at 10 30 um, out in the green space in the wesley center uh, just a gathering to celebrate making it through the year. There'll be ice cream. It's going to be great. Uh, I think that's it for yeah, our... Also, I have a prayer request. Uh, we've been praying for uh, Diane and McComas and uh, Kathy Slater. Both of them are here, and we are going to be celebrating uh, Dennis's life on uh, June 5th. It's a Saturday. Uh, there will be a graveside at Evergreen uh, Cemetery here in Morris at 1 p.m. So kindly uphold our dear ones in prayer and uh, we will continue to worship God because our God is a good God and how great is our God is the song that our praise team will guide us and lead us and sing in your hearts, in your spirits because we worship a God who is truly with us, will never leave us nor forsake us. Tries to hide 
and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens and is seated at your right hand after fulfilling all these things here on earth. Mercifully, give us faith and hope according to his promise of the Holy Spirit that he abides with us, his church on earth, and will lead us who believe in his redemptive work even until the end of the world, so that when Christ returns again, we too shall appear with him in glory. Amen. This uh, weekend is the weekend of the ascension of Christ into the heavens, and that is uh, the ascension day that we celebrate in the life of the church. And before Jesus ascended into heaven, he had uh, this wonderful prayer and also a celebration with his disciples and uh, we find our scripture recorded in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 17, verses uh, 6 to 19, and also the letter, the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verses 9 to 13. And I'm going to share with us, uh, firstly, the Gospel of John. John, chapter 17, verses 6 following. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to the heavens and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. 
they were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, And the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. John continues in his letter, the first letter of John, chapter 5, verses 9 to 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life, and whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Friends, this is the word of God for the inspiration and for the teaching of the truth for all of us who are the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, we thank you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who prays for us, intercedes for us, who journeys with us through the power of your Holy Spirit. On this ascension day that we celebrate in the life of the church, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you because you're our Lord, our rock, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Is there any meaning or purpose to life is the question that we are confronted with as we have read this passage of scripture. In the early 90s, when just before I came to the United States to get it, I had obtained a Master of Philosophy degree. In, I was working on a PhD and uh, working on a title for my dissertation, Meaning of Religious Statements. It was in special reference to a German philosopher by name Ludwig Wittgenstein. And I was at the Department of Philosophy at the University of Hyderabad, which is one of the premier institutions that was under the establishment of the Central University's Grants Commission. And I was a research fellow at this institution where the top-notch professors of our country taught and continue to teach. During that time, in one of the research papers, we were asked to write a response to a one word, one word only. It said, why, with a question mark. Why, that was it, why. 
So we scrambled to the library, we rushed there, looked over periodicals, poured over journals and articles and reserve publications which you couldn't even borrow, but you had to make copies out of, and then come up with a three page or at least a 1500 word response. So in my paper, I wrote extensively, giving every conceivable proposition, substantial arguments, and arrived at an appropriate conclusion with supportive references, quotations, and evidence to the question, why? The professor at the next class, after grading the papers, as she was returning them to us, she was impressed with our philosophical thoughts, arguments, and extensive research, and said that each one of us did well and we're going to get an A. But the highest grade recipient was getting an A plus, and we were wondering who could it be among us in that class who had got an A plus and why we just ended up with an A. And then she said, the one whose entire paper to that one question, why, consisted of a two word answer, why not? Why not? As we look at this gospel passage in the text that we read, we notice that it is Jesus who's making this prayer. It's a prayer to God for his disciples. And why is he praying is the question that people ask. Why is the question? And the answer is, why not? He is leaving the earth. He's ascending to the Father. And it's a farewell discourse and a consecration of the disciples for the fulfillment of Christ's mission and also the commissioning and also giving the disciples the boldness, the courage to suffer trials, persecution, and eventual death. Many of you like Shakespeare, and if anybody does not know about Shakespeare, is uh, one of those famous, famous playwrights. So in Act 5, scene 5 of Shakespeare's Macbeth, the character Macbeth has heard that the queen is dead. The queen is dead. And he knows that his own death is imminent. So at this time, he delivers his famous soliloquy, which goes like this. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time and all our yesterdays have lighted fools, the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle, life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing signifying nothing. Is Macbeth right? Is life nothing? Is it a shadow that has no substance and his life has no meaning? It is like that question that I had to write about why. Writers and philosophers and theologians since recorded time have tried to answer that question. And I don't think any of them have been successful in answering the question to everyone's satisfaction. Someone said that, and I quote, trying to speak about the ultimate reality, referring to death, is like sending a kiss through a messenger. We understand their point because something of it's, it's true and something is lost in translation. What is the meaning of life? It's a philosophical question to be sure, but it is not only the philosoph philosopher's question, it is a genuine human question, and therefore a question that we all ask. It might be a question that is asked in despair or hope, out of cynicism or out of a sincere curiosity, and also a deep desire to have goals and guidance as we journey in this life. However, we raise the question about the meaning of life because it is life's basic fundamental question. And that is why it comes as no surprise that Jesus is dealing with this question. Verse 1 says, after Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, 
Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. I'd like to share four truths about this discourse, this conversation, this prayer, this invitation for us as we deal with that question about what is the meaning of life. Firstly, in this prayer, Jesus tells us what makes ultimate faith possible. What makes ultimate faith possible? I suspect that what makes ultimate faith possible is a word called trust. It's a word that we all have to live by as disciples of Jesus. We hope sometimes wisdom is cumulative and the more we learn to entrust in matters small, the more graceful we become in our ultimate entrustment. Arguably, trusting or entrusting, the word that comes close to it in faith is, in, in our Christian journey is faith. When you entrust yourself to someone, you are having total faith in whom you are entrusting yourself. That's the most intrinsic, basic, and fundamental comp composition of who we are in our hearts. We are called to live by faith. We don't live up to ourselves without faith and trust. Maybe this is something that will help me explain this further. I don't know who taught you to swim. Any of you like to swim here? Any of you swimmers in here? Okay. I don't know who taught you to swim. If you ever learned, but you, I don't know that you would not have learned to survive in water if there weren't a teacher present whom you trusted yourself to make the learning environment wholly safe for you. You wouldn't go into the water without having a teacher or a lifeguard or a friend. And I don't know, so many of us are bike riders here. Any bike riders here today? Okay, a lot of bike riders here. You remember your first two-wheel bicycle, and in all likelihood, you learned to trust somebody who was holding the seat as, you, as they ran alongside you, so that even when you had those training wheels off, even as you wobbled from one side to the other, and you would make it out of the gate. I don't know a child would not be able to take the first step into a school bus, leaving mom and dad behind, and where, if it not were for the fact that the first school bus ride is the most in a series of completed developmental tasks that the child has imbibed, which gives them the reflexes and also proves to them that they can trust themselves to get on the first step of the bus on their way to school. Ironically, this reliance on the trustworthiness of others who have journeyed along with us leads us to the ability to trust ourselves, our little inside voices, our sensory touches, our, institution, uh, our intuition, which tells us, yes, I can swim. Yes, I can ride the bike. Yes, I can go off into an unfamiliar territory with strangers on the bus, and I'm going to be establishing myself so that one day I am able to be on my own. That is what is the prayer that Jesus is sharing with the disciples, that I am trusting you. I am asking God to trust you because you are my own. And when we are called God's own, there's nothing more that we need to hear in our life. Secondly, Jesus is giving us the roadmap that the joy of living a new life is the beginning. It's not the end. He's saying, Father, I give them to you. I am not going to be in the world anymore, but I am committing them to you. Kendall McCabe and Michael Scherer in their work, The Path of the Phoenix, write about the Feast of the Ascension in the Orthodox churches, they still observe it as a feast. It is a practice where they celebrate. And they remind us about two facts about Ascension Day. One is the resurrection of Jesus means that we are at a loss or temporarily deprived of the physical 
presence of Jesus as he was known in history as he revealed himself to the disciples. He was talking about that he was going to the Father. The other fact is the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of Christ, is able to make Jesus known and present Jesus to far greater numbers of people at the same time, even though he was not present in the physical form. Today, there are testimonies, dearly beloved, all across the globe, that the resurrected Christ is revealing himself to people in dreams, through visions, and I have been at prayer times and meetings where people have said they have felt and experienced the warmth running of God's spirit upon them, a, a warmth that came over their lives, or a cool breeze when they were walking that they felt across their face, or sometimes even the brush of angels' wings, or even the aroma of the fragrance of the rose of Sharon or the lily of the valley. So, the disciples are being invited by Jesus that the joy of living this new life is the beginning for their journey. That is, the historical Jesus is no longer physically present, but the cosmic presence and the authority of Jesus will be with the disciples and those who believe in the truth till the end of time. Our Easter celebration season will be ushering us into Pentecost next Sunday. It is the Sunday, as you see, that there is a beautiful stained glass in our sanctuary where the Holy Spirit is poured out on the disciples who are gathered there. It is the power of God that Jesus is promising to those who believe in this beginning of the new life. Thirdly and quickly, Jesus is inviting us to truly accept God's truth. Accept God's truth. Many times we see in our families this played out. If your children see you putting things which are mundane ahead of God, they will become discouraged and disillusioned like a young Jewish boy who once lived in Germany. His father was a successful merchant, and the family practiced their Jewish faith. But then they moved to another German city, and the boy's father announced that he would no longer attend synagogue, and they were going to join the Lutheran church. The boy was very surprised and asked his father why the family was joining the Lutheran church. His father's answer was something like this, for business reasons. There are so many Lutherans in this town that I can make a good business and establish contacts at that particular church. It will be good for business. That boy, who had a deep interest in faith and religion, became so disillusioned with his father that something died within him. Something died within him. He said to himself, my father has no real convictions. The incident helped him to turn against religion with a vengeance. The young boy later moved to England and began to write. His name was Karl Marx, the father of Marxism and communism. He wrote the Communist Manifesto in which he called religion the opium of the masses. I wonder if world history would have been sufficient or different had Karl Marx's father heeded the admonition of what the Jewish faith, the roots out of which we have the Judeo-Christian Judeo faith, the Shema of Israel, which goes, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. The truth of the gospel here is what Jesus is inviting us. Dearly beloved, our children, our young people, closely are observing and watching how we are living out our faith in our private life. What they want to see is a parent with such love and reverence to God that they will bring God into every area of their own lives and put God first in everything. Because children and youth want to see whether their parents truly love God enough to obey him, just like Jesus had obeyed God and had come to fulfill the plan of salvation for you and for me. 
Dearly beloved, how is it with your heart and how is it with your soul today? Are you truly accepting the truth that Jesus is sharing with you and me today? Fourthly and quickly, Jesus gives us, the disciples, the power to witness. Witness is what he's calling his disciples. That as, as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they may also be sanctified in truth. The term to witness in our legal system is in fact the legal term that comes out of the Latin verificare. It means to make it true. Every assertion, therefore, always starts with a doubt and moves towards the truth through the witnesses who were there. We are a people who value witnesses more than anything else in order for us to gauge what we feel is safe to believe in or not. Our beliefs, dearly beloved, create our reality and the truth that we live by. A few weeks ago in the New Beginnings class, uh, Merlin Raber was leading the class. He went around sharing Bible verses and asking the class about their favorite Bible verse. And each one said how many verses they had committed to memory. And there was everyone going around the class and one of the verses that is, uh, is one of my favorites is the one that I read to you from the letter of John, 1 John chapter 5, and it is, this is the verse that really is one of my favorites. And this is the testimony or the witness that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life, period. My late paternal grandfather, Pendam John Simon, was a Lutheran minister. He was also the synod president in Guntur, India. He lived a wonderful, exemplary life, and he, in fact, influenced me as a teenager to serve as an altar boy during worship services. And Grandpa John died at the age of 85. Tata, as we lovingly called him, lived through the British Raj, India's independence struggle and freedom movement, his, uh, his memory was sharp as a tack even till the very end. Before he suffered a heart attack while grandma had slipped into coma and when the doctor had come and broke the news that grandma would not make it. That's when his health and his life just went downhill. But I remember in his bedroom hung a very old fashioned clock. It was a painting which depicted Jesus standing on a cloud with his arms outstretched beckoning to the viewer to come to him. And the inscription at the bottom said, Jesus shall come in like manner. Grandpa was perfectly prepared to meet his Lord, to come to receive him in the clouds. He implicitly believed and lived and preached that the word of the angel who said to the disciples on that mount when Jesus was being received into heaven on that ascension day, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come in the same way as you have seen him go up into heaven. Dearly beloved, Jesus is coming back once again. Jesus is going to come as the King of kings and the Lord of lords riding on a cloud with his angels and the trumpet sound but the question is, what is the meaning of your life without you preparing to meet Jesus when he comes the second time? He's praying to the Father that as, I have sent, as you have sent me, I'm sending them. And I am the one Jesus is reminding us today as we recollect the ascension 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem, that he is coming back. And as we look at the signs around the world, as we look at the things that are happening around the world, they all point to the time where Jesus is waiting to return to gather his own. The question is, do you believe this? If not, why not? Will you pray with me, please? We thank you, O Christ, that you 
have prayed for us and you continue to intercede at the right hand of the Father at which you are seated and thank you for inviting us to know that you are the one who makes ultimate faith possible. We thank you that you have given to us the road map and the joy of living this new life which is also the beginning of our life eternal. That our life here on earth is not permanent, that our life is with you. We thank you also, O God, that you have given to us the truth. We receive your truth. And I pray for anyone here who still does not have the Son of God. Because your word says that this is the testimony, this is the witness that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son, Jesus Christ, who lived, who loved, and who died and rose again for our sakes. That whoever has the Son of God, Jesus has life. And whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Dearly beloved, as you have heard the truth of Jesus, that he is coming back, are you prepared? And if not, he's standing at your heart's door and knocking and says, my daughter, my son, I love you and I pray for you and I'm coming back once again. Will you allow me to live with you and journey with you in the life to come? I pray this prayer of God for anyone who's here, who's watching. I pray that they will know that you are the truth, that you have come to us to show us and to give us new life. I pray this prayer with thanksgiving, believing, receiving in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. I'll invite our praise team to come and sing for us this uh, song of commitment, the song of prayer. My life is in you, Lord. My life is in you. some of the joys and concerns you would like to lift up for prayer this evening. And if you're watching online, you can text those prayers to me, 815-978-8069. What are your prayers this evening? Yeah, Linda. For what? Oh, it's Kathy's birthday today, so we celebrate Kathy. We're also celebrating the rain. We've been praying for more rain for our farmers. I'm sure they were very thrilled with the downpour we had. Uh, so we thank God for the rain and the growth. Diane and Kathy who are here, we're praying for our dear ones in mm -hmm. the home call of Dennis. And we also celebrate Kirk who is uh, testimony for the surgery that he had uh, three weeks ago and he's here ushering today so we celebrate 
Kirk. Absolutely. We continue to pray for Kirk and for you guys. And also we have Ed, Ed Wakeman here. We're praying for Doug, his son. Mm -hmm. Ed is here too. Prayers are going out to you, Ed, and your family. Mm -hmm. We continue to pray for Doug and for Ed and for Doug's wife and Doug's sisters. Yes, thank you. We're, lots of people want to pray for Doug and for you too, Ed. And for um, Yep, we continue to pray for Steve Butler, who's undergoing treatment for cancer, uh, for Greg, who has um, uh, been in the hospital and is still in the hospital, uh, undergoing the beginning of his treatment. So we pray for him to, to get out quickly. We also had some text messages from Aranda. Aranda asked for prayers for Lois. Uh, Lois is having some back pain, and for Aranda's niece Jessica um, has a, had a, a therapy or an assistance dog um, that passed away. Um, so please pray for Jessica and for Lois. We had a prayer lifted up for our police officers and our first responders, um, who are always the first ones to assist anyone in need uh, and put themselves in danger. Uh, quite a lot to do that. Are there any other prayer requests? I saw that uh, we're praying for Pastor Robert's family, uh, his Aunt Mary, uh, who some of you may know. She was here in Morris for quite a while. Uh, she was visiting, had a stroke, and went to Park Point for recovery um, and, and actually was able to go home to India, uh, but she did pass away from COVID. So please pray for the Saturi family and also for the people of India. We're continuing to pray for them. All right, I invite you to take a deep breath. Just center yourself in God's presence. Holy and gracious God, we come before you with so much heaviness on our hearts, some of us. Some of us are taking care of loved ones who are sick, who have uncertain diagnoses. God, we pray for all the caregivers. We pray for the ones uh, who are doing their best to, uh, to care so lovingly and so well, uh, but also trying to find time to care for themselves. God, we pray for our loved ones who are sick. We pray for healing. We pray that treatments would work. We pray that bodies would be strong and grow stronger. God, we pray for those who are mourning. We pray for your comfort. We pray that we would feel your peace, knowing that our loved ones are with you. God, for the rain, we say thank you. For birthdays, we say thank you. For each other, each of us who are able to pray for each other, to lift each other up, uh, to just uh, hold each other when we're not sure where we're going or what we're doing or what even there is to do, that we can pray for each other, that we can bring each other before your throne and lift each other up. God, we say thank you for that. God, we pray for our first responders, for their safety. God, we pray for the people of India, that you would uh, give wisdom to leaders and help that situation to, uh, to grow better. God, be with each one of us. Help us to seek wisdom, your wisdom, in each of our lives. We come before you in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are so grateful for all who give, whether it's here in worship, the offering baskets are in the back, or electronically, um, but we're just grateful. Uh, the uh, next year's confirmation retreat is already in the works, being planned. That is one of the things that your gifts uh, go towards. But so many ministries of our church, uh, we continue to support others in our community who are struggling uh, with the end of uh, some benefits, 
who are struggling to get back into the workforce, all that good stuff for continuing to reach out and help uh, our neighbors. Yes, uh, Pastor Laura shared with us, I have had the oh, privilege of journeying with a, a family of four this week, We're looking for gas money to go to work. So we are grateful for all your gifts and your generosity to the work of the church and also for the work of the mission. As our offering to God, would you rise in body and spirit as you're able as we give thanks to God in prayer? <clears throat> what can we say, O oh God, that we have your son Jesus Christ who is constantly looking and interceding and praying for his own. We thank you that we are your own. And then in your great love, you provide for us. Not only you provide for us and bless us, but you also make us a blessing. Bless each one of us who are here and those who are watching, those who are in need of your help, help us to share, help us to sacrificially give, knowing fully well that you will bless us 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. Bless every hand, heart, and home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing song is the only name, the only name we have. Yours will be the only name that matters to me, the only one whose favor I see, the only name that matters to me. Yours will be the friendship and affection I need to feel my father smiling on me, the only name that matters to me. And yours is the name, the name that has saved me, mercy and grace, the power that forgave me, and your love is all I Yours will be the only name that matters to me, the only one whose favor I seek, the only name that matters to me. And yours is the name, the name that saved me, mercy and grace, the power that forgave me, and your love is all I up in the land of glory with the saints i will tell my story there will be one name that i proclaim when i wake up in the land of glory with the saints i will tell my story there will be one name that i proclaim La 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 la
Yes, you can. What a great, what a great assurance that one day we will all wake up in the land of glory. Until that time, we are preparing ourselves with the strength of the Holy Spirit and the assurance of Jesus' promises to us. Now unto him, Jesus Christ, who is able to keep us from falling and present us before God's throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God be glory, dominion, and power. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rest, abide, and guide us now and forevermore. Amen. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, when I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. 